listen and take information and, and pass it on. And, and yeah, I'm glad you're here. Thanks for meeting with us. Brand new yeah. deal. Again, um, I remember you. Yeah, yeah. I was here yeah. in no, December with a few of us. December, November? Mm-hmm. Sometime. <laughs> <laughs> um, earlier when there was a, uh, a the ask was for a select committee on a Green New Deal. And it, here in February, we're here because we're asking for support on an actual resolution, which is even more exciting, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the first time in our my lifetime that I've ever seen a resolution or any kind of bill or anything on the table in Congress that would uh, help us transform our economy and our society to make sure that we don't have a climate crisis and create millions of good jobs in the process of doing that and lifting up a lot of marginalized and uh, communities as we go through this process. And I think it's really a really, really exciting opportunity and hope that Derek Kimmler also sees it as an exciting opportunity to show his leadership in the climate crisis and to stand with the 64 other representatives who have already co-sponsored the resolution. So this is why we're here today, um, and that's why I'm here. And I think if we can take a moment to go through the room, um, everybody here carries a lot of stories with them, and let them share um, why they're here for a Green New Deal, um, and maybe where they're from as well, since this is a pretty large district. Um, my name is Haley Bonderhaar. I am living in Tacoma. I'm with the Sunrise Movement Tacoma. I moved here in September from Fairbanks, Alaska, so climate has always been a big issue for me. Um, Alaska kind of gets the brunt of it, um, but right now we have issues with the federal government wanting to do drilling in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, which would be terrible for the wildlife or the indigenous populations there, um, in general for the world, because we have these fossil fuel reserves, but we can't even actually touch them if we want to prevent a climate disaster. Um, we have 12 years to reverse this until there is no chance for us. So we need this to be a priority for politicians. Um, instead of favoring profit, we need to favor people um, so we can ensure a healthy future for everyone. <laughs> I'm Miranda Hammer, um, and I'm with Sunrise Movement because I have a toddler, and I'd like to see a sustainable future for him and all other children. I'm also here because um, I'm Native American, and I can see all the harm that's been done to marginalized communities with fossil fuels. So um, those two reasons are like 100% why I stand with Sunrise Movement, and I hope that Derek Comer can see how important that is for marginalized members of the community as well. I'm Donna Albert, I'm a civil engineer and I live in Montana, Washington. And I, I put this in the in the folder again. You've seen this before. You remember this. Yeah, we don't have much time and it's going to become increasingly difficult to um, to uh, get off fossil fuels fast enough in order to avoid climate catastrophe. And I have five grandchildren, three of them are five years older or younger. I'm very concerned about their future. So that's that's why I'm here. I'm Stacey Oaks, and I organize with 350 Seattle. Um, and down here in Tacoma, because we're fighting the Tacoma LNG, um, you know, stuff, pollution doesn't doesn't follow our, um, our colonial borders. And so <laughs> even though I'm not in the district, I'm in the district because I'm on the planet. Um, and part of what I really appreciate about the youth um, at Sunrise and also the Green New Deal is that it actually gives us this sliver of hope for our children, for our grandchildren. Sure, yeah. um, and if you have any young ones in your life, whether they're yours or nieces and nephews, and in an indigenous sense, all children are all of our children. Um, and I think that we have to remember that at the beginning of every conversation. And I think trying to remind um, Representative Kilmer about that um, at every chance is really important. This is the sure, only, yeah, this is the only thing that's been proposed at scale to tackle this. And not tackling is not an option. So if you're not on board with the Green New Deal, you will find an absence of voters, guaranteed. Uh, what's your zip code? Hi, I'm Carol from 350 Tacoma. I want to echo what Stacey has just said about, you know, we need a sustainable economy at a national level. We need it at a global level, actually. But um, 
we've been dealing, a lot of us in this room, locally um, for several years just on what we know is happening in our own community. The Sunrise Movement and the Green New Deal take this to a federal level and they, the resolution itself incorporates solutions. We're not talking about kill everything and leave everybody unemployed to go green. We're talking about reasonable expectations for a sustainable economy. I also am a grandmother and a mother, and I know that I'm not the future, but standing in this room is the future, and we're not going to have one if we don't. The resolution is the least, it's a non binding acknowledgement and agreement to putting forth solutions. And the reason why we're all sitting here standing in this room right now is we've asked Representative Gilmer before in emails, in phone calls, with little to no response whatsoever. We will come back and we will repeatedly come back until and unless we get some kind of response that he's on board, that he's read it, that he understands it, and that he's willing to work with it. I am, my name is Victoria Leeson, um, I work with the Sierra Club, um, and you know, I think that this is a really amazing opportunity for Derek Kilmer. I, I always think about the Sierra Club helped start the Blue Green Alliance, which is a national organization that helps environmental organizations work with labor, mm -hmm. being on both sides of the Democratic coin. And the Blue Green Alliance has done amazing things, but I don't think anything quite at this scale, right? And I think what's amazing about this is that it's young people leading it, and it's a youth movement that's excited about changing our economy to align with goals that get us to a livable future. And so I think if Derek Homer is able to understand that it's not just about stopping fossil fuels, which it 100% is about, but it's like, how are we reimagining what our economy can look like and who's leading that while also saving our planet, which is like the huge driving force. Um, it's like, it should be a no-brainer for him. Um, I think just to echo what others said also, like, I don't think that he's going to stop hearing about this until he supports it. <laughs> uh, my name's Sean. I'm a student at Utah Tacoma. Um, security guard at Port Tacoma. Um, so I, I support the Green New Deal because I mean my workplace will be underwater if we don't do something. That's kind of a that's kind of a big thing. Um, it's not like this is something that's going to happen if we don't do something. It's something that's already happening. Uh, you know, every mass extinction event has been preceded by a die out of coral reefs, and we're seeing that right now. So we're not stopping something in the future for our kids. This is going to happen. This is happening in our lifetime. It's happening right now. I gave Kilmer my vote. You know, last time he was up. I can't do it again if he's not supporting this. So that's simple. My name is Bradley Thompson. Uh, I'm a registered nurse. I work up the up at the uh, St. Joe's Medical Center. I'm a constituent. Um, I'm also a, an uncle. I've got three nieces and a nephew, and I care very greatly about their future. And I think about the problem, and that um, image is so stuck in my mind because we have one shot at this, right? We have a very limited time to do something to scale with the problem. The Green New Deal, thanks to young people and young leaders, is the only thing in scale with the problem that I've even seen. So incrementalism isn't going to solve this. Small scale solutions are not going to solve this. And we don't have 10 years to discuss what to do. So I expect my representative to take action, and I'll vote in alignment with who takes action. I'm Diana with Route 50 Tacoma, and I'm here in support of Sunrise. And uh, I too feel that this is the only solution anywhere for uh, the climate catastrophe. So, uh, yeah, if Kilmer and others can't vote for it, then uh, we can't vote for them. So, I'm Neil Anderson with uh, Sierra Club, and I've been working on um, uh, trying to uh, clean up Washington as much as possible in the past couple of years. And we've seen some successes, but we all realize that what we were doing wasn't nearly enough and that we wouldn't be able to solve the crisis with just that action. And so we've all had, we've all looked at the science and we understand what scientists are telling us that we need to do. And it just seemed like there was no legislation that was uh, even approaching that. Uh, this is the first one that really is at that scale though. This is something that those of us who have been working on this issue 
can look at and say, yes, if we did this, this really would help us to avoid that crisis. And so we feel like this is really the only shot. This is something that we have to take. Uh, my name is Kathy. I live in Tacoma on the hilltop. Um, hang out with 350. Um, and um, I'm just so excited that young people are excited. Um, I think that, that they were deluged with, you know, lots of misinformation in the media. This is a, the, the climate, I study politics and journalism, and, uh, and I'm a citizen journalist, and this is the most censored story of just about I've ever seen. Um, and that's how we got here, because people will act when they know. Um, also, I'd like to say just for myself that um, I, and I think most of the people here, I know a lot of these, these the people from the various actions that have gone on here in, in solidarity with the Pialk tribe. And so now, um, and I, I think, and it sounded like from the article that I read, which was, might have been August or maybe as late as October, the first that we heard about, which are apparent plans to dredge the port, to dredge the Blair Waterway. And I fear that... Um, Representative Kilburn may be on the wrong side of that, and um, that's a, that's a big issue too. That the Yelp tribe has expressed concern about that because there's obviously a lot of toxin in that soil, and uh, they consider the orcas to be relatives, and um, so they're very concerned. And um, I stand with them on that, and I know most of the people here do as well. And um, I I, uh, I I think out of my concern of where the representative gives his money. I, I, don't, I didn't vote for him before, but I'll reconsider it if he comes out for the Green New Deal and uh, and he starts being really serious with us. And, and just, I, at some point, elected officials have to just close the door on some of these these lobbyists because it's not, they're, they're not, they don't care about saving the planet. It's pretty clear because we wouldn't be where we are right now. So, um, this is of utter importance, and as I said in the other meeting, I'm, I don't have any children, grandchildren, you know, that kind of childhood where not a lot of family ties and whatever, I'll lay it down on this one against the LNG plant and for the planet for these guys. Thanks, everyone, for sharing. Um, is, we gave you a packet that has letters from a few people who weren't able to be in this room but are standing for the uh, Green New Deal and hope that Representative Kilmer can come out and support for it. Um, yeah. Um, I feel like I didn't make it clear. I'm also a constituent, um, so I wanted to make that really clear and echo some of my friends over here. Not only did I vote for Derek Kilmer, but I actually worked on his campaign, um, doorbelling and phone banking for a long period of time, and I, like them, will reconsider my vote for him in the future if he does not uh, go along with the really good. So I just want to make that really clear. Sorry. <laughs> um, so there's a lot of information in the packet as well as a one-pager on what the Green New Deal is and what the resolution means. Um, there's a vote being considered to happen a lot sooner than we expected, which is um, probably the result of the ties that Mitch McConnell has to the fossil fuel industry and the tons of money that he's already taken from the industry. And we want to see that our representatives here in Washington, here in Tacoma, can stand up against those those fossil fuel industries that are working actively to harm our, us, our most vulnerable populations, and the populations that have yet to come, the future generations that people have been talking about and the ones that we haven't even yet talked about. Um, so we hope and ask that Derek Kilmer considers all of the things that are in that folder as well as the stories that we've shared today. Um, is there a, we are hoping to hear back from him by the 25th. Um, is that possible? Uh, I can certainly try. I mean, I'll, I'll pass it on, and, and folks in D.C. know that we're having this meeting, and I told them I would present all the information to them, so I'll follow up with them. They're probably closed by now, but, yeah. <laughs> so, hopefully, yeah. Yeah, we definitely want to hear the Yeah. And what was your name, sir? My name's Rob. Hi, Rob. Nice to meet you. Uh, oh, Stacey, were you going to add? Yeah, we, uh, as far as if you're checking back and potentially providing us the answers, it would be great to know also if he's willing to sign the no fossil fuel pledge. Yeah. Um, because that is kind of a, a pretty basic step to show that you're serious. Um, and um, we'd also love to know his position on 
whether he believes that fracked gas is still a bridge fuel, um, like the industry says. Um, we can provide more data to uh, the office if you want, um, but when industry pushes their numbers, they're using data that's over 10 years old, um, and they're using a 100-year time span versus a 20-year time span. So with only, only 12 years, 100's not going to cut it. Um, we need to be looking at a 20-year model. Um, and basically, we need to start knowing um, whether our representatives want to take that easy route of signing on to the greenwashing provided by industry, or whether they're look willing to look at what science is now telling us, that gas is as bad or worse for the climate than coal, and be ready to take a stance on that, too. All right, and tell the representative there's no planet B. <laughs> okay? <laughs> There's no planet B. There's no alternative. If we don't fix this stuff, your kids are done. Okay? All right. Is that a solid enough message? Right. <laughs> Thank you. Well, thanks for meeting with us. Is there anything that you can share about um, what Gilmer is considering or looking at? What she, um, what she done for the environment? Or if there's anything else that, um, like, along this timeline until we finish this, that like any additional information that we can provide or help support? So like I said before, I'm not authorized to be a spokesperson for the office, um, and especially if you're recording, I, I just can't make any statements. I can get your questions to the folks who can, though, and get your response.